What is going on guys, it's Modded Dwarf here. Welcome back to another episode of PS4 Jailbreak Tutorials. As you can see here, I'm currently on Skyrim on the PS4 version of Skyrim running some PC mods that I have converted to run on the PS4 version. Quite a lot of different mods here, including some custom animation mods, armor mods, uh, weapon mods and environment mods and uh, yeah this is something really cool that you can do on a jailbroken ps4 obviously on a retail ps4 you can install some mods but sony limits it so that you can only install mods that use assets that already exist within the game which really limits the amount of mods that you can install but with a jailbroken ps4 the majority of the mods that you can find on places like nexus mods for the pc version and you can install those mods port them over to the ps4 and get them running so in this video, I'm going to be doing a full tutorial showing you guys not just how to install uh, these mods, but also how to convert them to run optimally on the PS4. Uh, so this is going to be a big video because I want to go in depth and show you as much as I can. Hopefully by the end, you'll have the knowledge to be able to convert the vast majority of mods that are on Nexus mods to run on the PS4. Obviously, there are a few mods that you can't install on the PS4 version particularly ones that use the script extender because there is no version of the script extender for the PS4. But don't worry too much because a lot of mods that say they require the script extender don't actually require them. They only require them for, for like the MCM, the kind of in-game menu. But, you know, the mod can function without that. So a lot of mods that say they require the script extender will still work. So, yeah, anyway... So let's get into this because this is going to be a long video and this will also work for Fallout 4 as well and probably Fallout um, 76. Also, I've decided to split this video into two separate parts. This first part is still going to be a complete guide in and of itself. But in this video, I'm just going to show you guys how to install pre-converted mods as well as how to install mods that don't really need to be converted and how to check to see if they need to be converted or not, as well as showing you how to actually convert some PC files that do require conversion but should still be fairly straightforward to do. So this will be the easy stuff here in this first part. But in the second part, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how to convert a lot more complicated mods like huge DLC size mods and mods that add custom animations and behaviors into the game, uh, which is going to be a lot more complicated. So I'll save that for part two. So before we get started, I just want to give a huge shout out to Colonel Panic on Twitter uh, and on Discord or wherever else he's, whatever platforms he's on because he's helped out a ton with this video, giving me a lot of knowledge. He's the person who has created most of the converting tools that are used to actually convert the PC mods over to the PS4 version. And uh, yeah, he's just helped out a ton with this video and brought me up to speed on all of the new methods for converting stuff that wasn't possible before, because it's been a few years since I've tried to do this. So yeah, he's just helped out a ton. So go ahead and give him a follow and give him a thanks from me. I really appreciate it. So let's switch on over to the PC and I'll show you guys what you need to get started. Okay, so the first thing you're going to need on your computer is a fake package version of the game and a fake package version of an update for the game. Doesn't really matter what version, just make sure that you have an update for the game as a package file. So the reason you need this is that we're going to create a modded update, which we're going to install all of our mods to, and then we can patch the game with that update to install the mods onto the game. So that is how this is going to work. Because of that, you need it to be a fake package version of the game. So, you know, if you know where to look, you can go ahead and download the fake package versions of the game and the update. Um, if you have a physical copy, like a disc copy, you can actually dump the game and convert it into the fake package uh, equivalent of the game and the update and then reinstall that back onto your PS4. Uh, that can be done as well. I covered that in episode six of this series. So check the links in the description to go ahead and check that out if you need to convert a retail copy to a fake package copy. But anyway, assuming that you have a fake package update for the game and a fake package version of the game as well, then we are basically all set. So the next thing you need are the conversion tools, which you can just extract into a folder right here. So we're not going to necessarily use all of these tools because some of them are for Fallout and some of them are for Skyrim. They're just mixed in here. So just go ahead and download this. This will contain pretty much everything you need for porting the mods over from the PC version to the PS4 version. And we're also going to need some PC mods as well. So first thing we need to do is extract the update. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and open up the um, patch builder program that's in here. 
in the conversion tools. So we're going to open patch builder. This is version 1.3.1. And then we're going to go to the location of our game update, our fake package game update for Skyrim. And we're going to go ahead and drag that into the package extraction section. And then from there, we're going to click extract package, select all. And I'm just going to extract it to the same location because this is currently installed on my USB drive. And uh, this is just going to make it easier for installing the package when we come to actually install it back onto the game. So I'm just going to go ahead and extract it to that location. So just pick a location and extract the update there. Again, same process for Fallout 4. And again, we're just extracting the update, not the full game, just the update. Okay, so while that's extracting, let me go through and show you guys how to get some mods for the game. So the first place you should look for mods is nexusmods.com forward slash Skyrim PlayStation 4 because all of the mods on here are mods that have already been converted to work on the PS4. Again, most of them were converted by Colonel Panic, who obviously knows what he's doing, so they'll be converted properly. So you should definitely go ahead and check this out first. So if we wanted something like the Skyrim Floral Overhaul, uh, then we could click this mod and then we can go to Files and then you just download manually. So do a manual download. And uh, you, you do have to have an account on the website. So just make an account if you don't already have one. Just make a free account. And then you can start downloading mods from here. There are some PC mods that don't actually need to be converted as well. So if you can't find the mod you're looking for on here, you, then you can head to nexusmods.com slash Skyrim Special Edition, which is just the PC version. Um, so all these mods are for the PC version, not converted. And then you can just search for the name of the mod. So for example, if we want Cheating Chess Riverwood, so we've got Cheating Chess. So if I select this, and I know for a fact that this mod does not require any converting. It doesn't have any additional files that need to be converted. So I can just go ahead and again, just download it right here. So do that with all the mods that you want to download. So as you can see, we've now finished extracting our update. So if we go into the image zero folder, we have all of the files that we need right here. So the data folder is where we're going to add all of our mods to. So as you can see, I've got all of the PC mods that we're going to be converting here in this folder. And I'm going to start off with some really easy ones. I've got some super simple ones and ones that don't need to be converted. And I've also got some ones that are pretty tricky and that require a lot of converting to get working so that you guys can see the difference. So we'll start off easy and then we'll work our way up to the more tricky stuff. So first thing we're going to do is install um, the Cheating Chess Riverwood because this is a mod that does not need to be converted because as you can see, it's just an ESP file. So if the mod that you're trying to convert is just an ESP file, then you're absolutely fine. So all we need to do here is go ahead and copy this ESP file into the data folder in our image zero data for our update. And then we want to right click and rename it, copy the name of the file just like this. And then if we go back into the image zero folder, we're going to right click on the skyrim.ccc file. If this file doesn't exist, then just create it. Um, and then right click and go to edit with notepad plus plus or notepad or whatever text editor you have. And we're going to go ahead and open this up right here. And then from here, we're going to go and add to the beginning our mod. So we're just going to paste in the name of the mod in the, at the beginning of the file. So any mods you add, you want to add before all of these ESL files. So we just add that mod right in there. We click save. Now, if you're concerned about load order, then we can install loot, uh, which we'll do later on, which will allow us to organize our mods to run optimally uh, so there's no conflictions. But for now, just add them right in here. So we're going to add that in and then we're going to go back to our data folder and that's it. So that's done now. All we have to do is recompile this back into a update again and then patch the game with it, run the game, and we'll now have that cheating chest installed uh, in the game. That mod is now installed. So it's really that simple with mods like that. Now, the next thing we have is the Skyrim Floral Overhaul. Now, this is one that I downloaded from uh, the PS4 version of Nexus mods. The, so this mod has already been converted for us. So we can just go ahead and copy all of the files here into the data folder. Just like this. And now that that's copied into the data folder, again, we just take the ESP file or ESM file and we copy it 
and we go back to our Skyrim CCC file and we just add it in right there and then save. And again, that mod is now added. Super simple. Obviously, that mod's already pre-converted for us, so uh, it's as simple as that. Same with realistic water textures too. I won't bother adding the patches. I'll just add these. Again, this is a mod that's already pre-converted that I downloaded from nexusmods.com slash Skyrim PlayStation 4. And again, I can just copy the ESP file and again, paste it directly in here. And all those mods should work absolutely fine. So next we'll go and try and do another mod called Potion of Ultimate Leveling, which is just a little cheat mod to level up. So we're going to go ahead and add this. Now this is not pre-converted. I downloaded this one from nexusmods.com slash Skyrim Special Edition. So the PC mod. So this is the normal PC version. And uh, so this actually, you know, is not already pre-converted. So one of the things you're going to need to do if you have a mod like this that's not pre-converted and it has a BSA file as well as the ESP file, then what we'll do is we'll again just drag them into the data folder right now and we'll again do the same thing where we'll add the ESP file in. So we'll just copy that right in here and there we go that's added but we need to check to make sure there's not any files inside this BSA because BSA files are like archives like a zip file where they contain a bunch of other files so some BSAs might have sound that needs to be converted animations that need to be converted maybe textures that need to be converted and some might just have scripts which don't need to be converted so if the BSA file just has scripts inside then we don't need to convert it we don't need to worry about it so Let's go ahead and check. So we can check by opening up the conversion tools and running the BSA extractor, uh, which also extracts BA2 files as well, by the way, which are the Fallout 4 equivalents of BSAs. So we can go ahead and drag this in here. And as you can see, this just contains scripts and that's basically it, just scripts. So that's fine. We don't need to convert that one. It just has scripts inside, but it's worthwhile checking anyway, just to be sure. Okay, so that's pretty much all the easy ones out of the way. So let's get into some that are going to be a little bit more complicated. So I'm going to go ahead and create this folder called um, called current mod that I'm just going to use as a backup folder for now. So what we're going to do is we're going to try this next one, which is Magicka Sabers, which is the lightsaber mod. So if we open this one up, you can see that it contains meshes, sounds and textures as well as the ESP file. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to extract them into this folder, this current mod folder, so that we can work on converting these. So the meshes should be fine, should be no reason that we need to convert any meshes. The sound, however, that's going to be a problem because as you can see, the sound files are .wav format and the PlayStation 4 requires the sound files to be .89, which is its own kind of compressed audio format. So we need to convert them to an AT9 file in order for that to work. Now, luckily, we have the amazing tools from Kernel Panic, which will allow us to do so. So all we have to do is open up one of those tools. And the one we're looking for, if we go to Kernel Panic's tools, and we're going to run the sound converter. So we're going to run the Fallout 4 sound and music converter. So we're going to go ahead and open this up. And then we're going to take the sound folder and just drag it into the music converter and then click start. And then just wait a few seconds and as you can see it is converted and if we go back into the sound folder you can see that all of those wav files have been converted to 89 so they'll work on the ps4 now so that's nice and simple the next thing we have are textures so textures will actually work on the ps4 without converting them but they can make the game unstable and cause glitches and stuff so it's really not recommended to to leave them unconverted so and it's super simple to convert them as well. We just use Kernel Panic's texture converter. So we run the texture converter. And again, we get the same warnings. So just click OK. And then we're going to drag in the textures folder. And then we're going to click Start. And that's going to go ahead and convert the textures. There we go. And the textures, when you look at them, they're still DDS format. Um, but they have been converted. If you drag them into like a hex editor, you'll see they've converted them to GNF format even though they're still .dds, they are converted to a GNF, which is what's required for PS4 for them to run properly. So there we go. So that's it. We've converted all of the stuff that needs to be converted there. So 
The next thing is how do we then install that on the PS4? Well, there's two ways of installing this mod, actually. You can just copy all of these files directly on like this, including the textures, the meshes, and the interface. And then again, we can go ahead and copy the ESP file and paste it in right here. And voila, that will work. However, it's not recommended to uh, have the folders like this, the raw assets basically stored in here like this. You want to have these meshes, sounds, and textures, and any of these other asset files compiled into a BSA archive, like all of these other mods we installed that came with a .BSA, because they'll basically run faster, they'll load faster if they're in a BSA. So when you don't have them in a BSA, you're increasing your loading times. You're also running into issues where if these folders are too many directories deep, like eight directories deep or more, then you will not be able to compile the game update back into a package file. You'll run into an error when trying to compile the package. So you really want to have these assets as a BSA file instead of storing the raw assets like this. So that is doable though. I'll show you guys how to do that right now. It's real simple. All we have to do is run the BSA generator and obviously the BA2 generator if you're using Fallout 4. And what we're going to do is create a data folder. This is important. Do not forget this. Create a data folder and then copy the files into the data folder. So what we're going to do here is create two BSA files. One BSA file is going to have uh, just textures in it. So we have one BSA file just for the textures. And then we have another BSA file that is for all of the other assets. Any of the other assets, they all go into that other BSA file. So we'll do the textures first. So we'll just drag the textures in. We click edit, we click check all items, we select textures because that's all we've added. And then we click file, save as, and then I'll just save that to the same location here, current mod. Um, we'll just save it to current mod right here. And as for the name, we want to make sure the name is the same name as the ESP file. So the ESP file for the lightsabers is light emitting magicka sabers SSE. So I'm just going to make sure that the textures file has got the same name, but then dash textures at the end. So we're going to add that in, click save. And as you can see, that creates it right there. You can delete the BSL file that comes with it. So we just now have the uh, dash textures.bsa. <clears throat> then we'll click file new. And then we'll do the same thing with the meshes and the sounds. We'll drag those in. We'll select meshes sounds. You can also select like all of these tick boxes if you're not sure which assets are actually in there and then click edit and then check all items and then again file save as and again you just want to name this the same name as the as the ESP file literally the same name as the ESP file and then click save and boom there we go so now we have again delete the BSL so now we have the textures.bsa and the regular BSA file and we can just copy those in just like that and that's it. That mod is now fully converted. So that may seem quite complicated. It's really not. All you're doing is converting the assets and then packing them into BSA files, a separate BSA file for the textures, another one for all the other assets, and then you're copying them into the data folder. It's really that simple. So that's that mod done. So we can now delete all of the files in here. That's now installed. So so another important thing I need to mention is that if you're doing a mod that does not come with an ESP file, that just comes with the raw asset folders like meshes, textures, sounds, etc. And you turn them into a BSA file so that they'll load faster and obviously copy them into the data folder as you normally would. The game is actually not going to be able to load them because it's not going to look for these BSA files. If it comes with an ESP file, then the ESP file will load the BSA file for you. Uh, so you don't have to worry about it. But if you just have BSAs with no ESP to load them, the game is not going to know to load these textures and meshes. So what we have to do is actually edit the Skyrim.ini file. So I'm just going to edit that in Notepad++. And then you're going to scroll down to the archive section and add the BSA files in here. You've got S resource archive list for the regular BSA files and S resource archive list 2 for the textures BSA files. So all we have to do is add these right in here. So UNP textures, we'll just add this to S resource archive list two. Right at the end, just add a comma on the last BSA file and enter the BSA file in here. And then obviously do the same for your normal BSA file as well. 
you just add it into the end here and save and then the game will know to load those bsa files now okay so that's all the easy mods out of the way and that's all i'm going to show you guys how to install in this video in the next part i'll show you guys how to install some more complicated mods ones that add new animations into the game and you know giant mods that add a lot more stuff into the game a lot more new environments and and quests and you know characters and all that kind of stuff so we'll get into that in part two so the last thing I'm going to show you here in part one is how to use a mod organizer with the PS4 version so that you can order your load order uh, with a mod organizer, which will essentially just change the order in which the mods are loaded. So changing the load order so that they don't conflict with one another and that they load in the best way possible is preferred. So obviously you don't have to do that. It will probably work just fine like this. But obviously some of you guys might want to install a mod organizer just to be able to make sure that there's no conflicts and that you know everything loads in the most optimum way. So in order to do that, we're gonna go ahead and install Loot, which is included in the conversion tools, but obviously, you know, you should probably download the latest version. I'll put the GitHub link in the description so you can just install the latest one. So I'm just gonna go ahead and run Loot right here and we'll go ahead and install this. We have to do a little bit of setup to get this to work on the PS4 because obviously it's not designed to work with the PS4 version. You know, this mod organizer or mod manager, whatever you want to call it, or is obviously designed for the PC version. So we'll go ahead and load it up right here. We'll click OK. We're going to add a new game and we're just going to call it whatever we want. So Skyrim PS4 and obviously the base game, we're going to select Skyrim Special Edition. The loot folder can be any folder. So I'll just copy the path of uh, this uh, current mod folder and we'll just use that as the loop folder for now. Then there's the master file, which is actually skyrim.esm, which I think is the same on the PC version, if I'm not mistaken. You can actually find it in the data folder. Uh, it's, it's the skyrim.esm file. I think it will be called Fallout ESM or Fallout 4 ESM for Fallout 4. Then we have the master list repository URL. So if I type in Loot Skyrim on PS4, you can see down here we have the GitHub page for Loot. So if I go to the GitHub page for Loot and select Skyrim Special Edition, this is the URL that it's looking for. So I can just go ahead and add that URL in here. Then the master list repository branch is going to be this branch right here is version 0.15. So I'm just going to go ahead and add uh, v0.15 in here. So then for the install path, you're just going to enter the path of your install location for the extracted files for the game update right here. So the image zero folder, we're just going to add that in as our install path. Then we need a registry key because it actually checks your registry to make sure that you have the, the registry keys for Skyrim installed so that it appears that you actually have the PC version installed. So obviously, if you don't have the PC version of Skyrim installed, what you can do is just run this registry file. I'll have one for Fallout 4 as well. So just run this registry uh, file right here. Click yes, that will merge it with the registry. And then once that's done, you can then right click and click edit, which will open this in Notepad and then just copy the path right here to Skyrim Special Edition and paste it in as your registry path right there. Then once we click apply, uh, if it still does not show up, if it still gives you this error, just close loot and reopen it. And as you can see, it works. It detects it. So it works with the PS4 version now. And it's detected all of our cheats, cheating chess, uh, floral overhaul, realistic water textures, and all the other ones, as well as the actual game and the updates and obviously the, the DLC files as well. So all we have to do to uh, get it to actually order, change the load order of our mods to load in the most optimum way is we just have to click up here, this little button called sort plugins, because right now it says you have not sorted the load order. So if we click this, that will change the load order. And there we go, sorted made, sorting made. Oh, no changes. So I guess we already had it in the perfect, the perfect order anyway. Um, but obviously, depending on how many mods you add, you, you're probably not going to have them uh, in the right order. So that will ho have hopefully fixed it. So if it did change anything, then you can just click up here and go to copy load order. And from there, you can then go back into your Skyrim CCC file, delete all of the mods and then paste in the load order. And then obviously just get rid of this numbering that's right here. 
and also uh, get rid of all of the all of these other ESM files for the DLC, the game and the update because that already gets loaded anyway so that you just have the mods in there and then that will have your load order sorted to the correct order so that everything will load optimally and there'll be less chance of mods conflicting with each other, uh, which is handy. So obviously you don't need to use a mod organizer like this, but it is up to you. Um, it is probably a good idea to use it, uh, especially if you're installing lots of mods. Obviously, if you're just installing a few mods, it's probably not necessary. But if you're going to be installing lots of mods, then I would probably recommend using this. So that's it. We have everything prepared now. So now all we have to do is compile this back into a game update again that we can patch the game with and then all of our PC mods should be installed. Oh, and one more thing before we compile the update, something that Kernel Panic told me is that you can actually, if you want to create a 60 FPS patch, you can do that real easily on this game uh, so that uh, basically unlocks the frame rate, sets the tar target frame rate to 60 FPS instead of 30. Obviously, it's probably not going to run at a stable 60. It'll be probably fluctuating. So you might want to just keep the 30 FPS lock. But, you know, it's something you can do if you want to get higher frame rates. So if you open the Skyrim.ini file, and in the display section, if you just add into the display section somewhere, this this line, B lock frame rate equals 60, which um, obviously I'll put that in the description. You can just copy and paste it into your Skyrim.ini, and that should set the target frame rate to 60 FPS instead of 30, and it should give you higher frame rates, especially if you're on PS4 Pro with boost mode enabled in the settings. If you enable boost mode in the settings, then that should potentially give you higher frame rates so you know definitely worth a try right there of course we're going to go back into the conversion tools we're going to run the patch builder program and let that load up and once that loads up we can go ahead and drag in the image zero folder into the project location drag the actual game package file the package file that the the update is designed to patch which is the actual original game package file copy that into path to original game package and then from there you can just click build package to build the update or edit the patch notes first which will allow you to add you know some kind of message that will show up in the update history on the ps4 so that you know um, that this you know patch has been installed successfully so we'll just call it pc mods and then close and then we can just build the package file obviously i'm going to rename the original game update to um orig underscore patch just so it's named differently so we know which one's the original patch and which one's got our mods on it and then we're just going to build the package file to the root of my usb drive so that i can install it directly on the ps4 and as you can see it is building it right here so okay and once it's done you can go ahead and close out of the patch builder and we'll delete the log and we can install this update back onto the game. Just make sure the package file is in the root of a USB drive. And obviously that the USB drive is formatted in XFAT or FAT32 format. So that you'll be able to install it on the PS4. Then we're just going to go ahead and eject the drive and plug it into the PS4. Okay, and once on the PS4, what we're going to do is go ahead and load our internet browser. And of course, make sure you clear your browsing data before you load any exploit. And then we're going to load up our exploit host. Again, use whichever one you prefer. Obviously, I'm using caro218.ir. You can use Night King's host, PRB's host, Wolf Games host, and many, many others. So yeah, we're just going to load up a website that has the jailbreak. And we're going to load up the uh, WebKit exploit. And obviously, once the WebKit exploit loads up successfully to 100%, then we should be able to load the jailbreak. And of course, as long as you're able to run the jailbreak without it crashing, uh, it may take a few attempts, but once you're on, you can then run the Gold Hen payload uh, or Mira, whichever one you prefer. So run Gold Hen or Mira. And then once that's running, you can then go into your settings menu, scroll down to the bottom. You'll have a new option added called debug settings. Go to game package installer, and as you can see, we now have the package file showing up here. So obviously install the game package file first if you don't already have the game installed. And then once that's installed, you can then run the update, the modded update that has our PC mods added to it. And we'll just install this and that will patch the game with those mods. So we'll be able to run them in game. Okay, and once that's installed, don't forget that if you have got the FPS patch on, the 60 FPS patch, 
to go into the system settings and make sure that boost mode is enabled on if you're on a PS4 Pro so that you can take advantage of that unlocked frame rate. So let's go ahead and run the game. Before that though, you can go ahead and go to update history, options, update history. And as you can see, it says PC mods there at the top. That's our patch notes that we added in the patch builder showing up there. So we know that the update has been installed successfully. So now we can go ahead and run the game and we should have those PC mods installed. It's a little bit higher. I wouldn't say it's 60 FPS though. It doesn't quite feel 60, but I mean, I guess if I had the Orbis, um, Orbis toolbox with the frame rate counter, I could tell, but as you can see, we do have all of the other stuff uh, running. It definitely feels a bit smoother than 30 FPS, but doesn't quite feel 60. Um, but as you can see, we've got things like the uh, realistic water textures 2 showing up. We've got that realistic water, which is looking really nice. We also have the um, floral overhaul. So you can see there's more trees added into the world. And you can see that we also have all the grass textures, all that stuff has been changed, all the plants and stuff. There's been more foliage added into the game. And then, of course, we also have things like um, our potion of ultimate leveling, which is here. And we also have the Magicka Sabers as well. Now, these spawn in certain locations in the world. So you actually have to go and, you know, find the location of where these items spawn. That's one of the issues with PC mods is that some PC mods require you to use the console to add the item. They don't spawn anywhere in the world. And obviously, because we don't have access to the console on the PS4 version yet, then um, you can't really, even if you have those mods installed, there's no way of actually using them if they have to be added by the console. So that's something you need to be aware of as well when you're porting PC mods over is you need to make sure that whatever PC mod you're porting actually has some kind of way of getting it in the game other than spawning it in by the, via the console. Um, so obviously the Magicka Sabers spawn in, in, certain in a certain location and uh, it tells you that in the mod description uh, on the Nexus mods. So anyway, as you can see though, we've got the lightsaber mod working here in game. That's all fine. And um, obviously we've got the floral overhaul and the water textures working and our cheating chests of Riverwood are right here as well, which has all of these items that you can take. And obviously there's other chests uh, scattered throughout Riverwood as well with this mod. There's another one right here. So you can go ahead and get lots of different powerful items right here. So, I mean, yeah, that's basically it for this first part. Obviously, these are just easy mods that we ported over initially. There's lots of other ones that are more tricky to port over. For example, uh, mods that add new animations to the game, like Thor's new idols in Skyrim. And there's also, uh, obviously, much larger mods, like DLC-sized mods, like Project AHO, which add whole new environments into the game and new, uh, you know, new your characters and animations and uh, behaviors and stuff like that 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 need to be added so they're a lot more complicated so we'll be covering that in part two and one other thing i want to quickly mention there is a bug with the save files that you can get this particular error i'll put a picture of it on screen that can happen i've not experienced this myself but colonel panic uh, has told me that he's experienced it quite a few times so it's a good idea just to back up your saves, either copy them to a USB drive or use FTP to just copy the uh, the actual save data, you know, every now and then make a backup of your saves in case you run into this issue. Um, be aware of that. Just make sure you're backing up your saves often um, because the last thing you want to do, obviously, is, lo is lose all your save data. But that's it here for part one. So obviously, if you were able to follow everything in this part, I would definitely recommend you check out part two because a lot of larger, more complicated mods can be converted. They just require a bit more work, but I'll be showing you that all in the second part. So hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe and I'll hopefully see you guys in the next episode.